This article is called Hibbit, Addict, Immoderant, Obliviate. The dictionary definition of oblivious reads as follows. Not aware of, or not concerned about, what is happening around about. Forgetful, unmindful. Likewise, the dictionary definition of oblivion reads, the state of being unaware or unconscious of what is happening. The Hibbit. There is a dotted line in the sands of our consciousness, beyond which we have a sense that control, whatever that may be for us, goes walk about without us. It is where hibition sets in. Now, <clears throat> hibition is worth mentioning here, because although the word is not in the dictionary, it is in the Urban Dictionary. When we are inhibited, there is an extra level of conscious control we are bringing to our thoughts, our behaviour, our awareness. And we use inhibition as a cloak to hide our persona, our personality, behind. It is all about our reserve, the private and unshared me the considered and thoughtful person we want the world to see that we are. When the world, the world we inhabit, the world our persona and behaviour collides with, when that world sees any degree of hibition from us, the perception of our me within that world changes. Also, the perception of our me that we witness in that world changes as well. You could say, the me that I see that I am also changes. Now hold, if you would, onto that notion, that sentence, that sentience, for as long as it is necessary to consider whatever may be your addiction. The addict. We are all addicts. Yes, we all have addictions. The vicar, the train guard, the minister, the lollipop lady, the shy man, the shaman, the salesman, and the rest of us. We all have addictions. Oh, indeed, yes, in society's labelling system, Addiction has taken on a judgmental meaning surrounding some destructive area of human frailty. The ones high up the scale of perniciousness are drugs, drink, gambling. And why is that, do you think? Consider what lies behind them all for clues. There are other things certain of us become addicted to. Sex, power, fame, for instance. We call these addictions lust, yet they are still addictions. The bankers are addicted. The politicians are addicted. The religious zealot is addicted. The bully is addicted. The athlete and the explorer are addicted. The Saturday night hedonists are addicted. The prim and proper prudences are addicted. And the workaholics are addicted. Addiction is part of all of us. And we love our addictions. We love indulging ourselves. We greet these loves as regular as clockwork, as familiar friends. I just can't do without my ex. Whatever ex that may be. 
Now hold, if you will, the sense of that idea, for as long as it is necessary to consider what lies behind moderation. The immoderate. Is moderation about not indulging or not overindulging? When I wrote about the quality of pleasure back in August 2011, I talked about certain words that have been twisted out of shape in our modern world. Moderation is one of these words. There's this notion in the world that moderation means diluting pleasure. However, my argument is that moderation is about diluting the quantity of one particular pleasure. If we have a menu of pleasures, then we can be indulgent in a qualitative way over a number of pleasures, rather than indulgent in a quantitative way over one pleasure. The key is to enhance our menu. But I digress. So which is it? Immoderate or I'm moderate? Which are you? How do you rate your modes of being, of behaving? Do you ration yourself in some of your modes so that they become mode ration, moderation? In truth, any excess we pursue is an acknowledgement of our addictive condition. And any pursuing of any pleasure to excess eventually destroys the pursuer. Oh, come on, Pete, I can hear you say. I love gardening. How will that destroy me? Well... How far are you prepared to take that love? For I suspect you are, you love doing gardening, but you are not yet addicted to it. It remains, for the present, a pleasure. We need to find a way of balancing our pleasures and addictions with a moderation based on quality. Now hold, if you would, onto that notion, that sentence, that sentience, for as long as it is necessary to consider whatever may have been your sense of oblivion. The Obliviate. If it is that oblivion, for you, means being unaware or unconscious of what is happening, then ask yourself why would you seek to be oblivious? What purposeful gain would accrue from such an experience? I was recently in a conversation with a young acquaintance who was wary of hypnotherapy, which we can also refer to as a therapeutic process facilitated by hypnosis. He was concerned at what would, or might, happened to him while in trance. I'd lose control, he said. That worries me because I wouldn't be in charge of me. The idea of it spooks me. This was indeed fascinating language. His personal representation that I always controls me and that me is worried, nay, spooked when me had a felt sense that I wasn't in control. I raised the subject of oblivion, of being oblivious, and he said, that's it. It's like that in a nutshell. I'd feel I'd be under someone else's control and not my own. So tell me what you did last Saturday evening, I invited. He then proceeded to relate his meeting up with some mates for a drink, going on to a club, etc. Now this is all a very common pattern for quite a swathe of society as we know it. 
For what purpose? What do you get out of this? I asked. He seemed amazed that I'd asked such a, such a naive question, and smiled and uh, then elaborated when I gestured him to go on. To have a good time, have some fun, have a load of drinks, have a great laugh, get rat assed just generally enjoy myself in great company, and so on. Tell me about rat assed I said, and he did. And after Rat asked, tell me about what happened next. And he did. And the detail was graphic, until he reached the point where, due to alcoholic influence, he couldn't remember what had happened in the next part of his night out. So would that be something like oblivion? I asked. Would you say you were oblivious as to what happened next? He looked at me a bit sideways and then nodded. So, when you are ob obliviously rat asked, where is control? Who has control? I asked. He shrugged his shoulders as his eyes fell from looking at me. And does that experience spook you? And when you're like that? Who is in charge of you? Who is running the show then? Considerant. While there is a link between obliviates, immoderates, addicts and hibbits, it is not a progressive path. There is also a need to consider the matter of the chosen vehicle of delivery. My young friend's chosen vehicle of delivery is alcohol. Mr. Creosote, the character from the Monty Python film The Meaning of Life, had food as his vehicle of choice. For Lord Byron, the vehicle was opium, and so on. Addicts and immoderates have a very strong link, and Given we're all addicted to something, we all tend to have no moderation around that thing. Of the four, hibbits are the most natural, and it is a disposition, a way of being in the world, that permits authentic expression. Those of us blessed with or who gain natural hibition, not one brought about by a chosen vehicle of delivery, are able to live a less complicated life. Hibbits tend not to seek oblivion either. They also have a clearer perspective of pleasures and moderation. They can ration their modes well, build a wide-ranging menu of pleasures and vehicles of delivery. They are comfortable with their inner and outer words and worlds. Because of their wide-ranging menu of pleasures, hibbits are less prone to being addicted to harmful and pernicious things. In theory, we would get the most out of life by being a hibbit, not an addict, an immoderant, or an obliviate. Of course, we could all carry on blissfully unaware of any or all of this. We could continue to be oblivious to such notions, theories or arguments. And as the sands of our consciousness become blown into dunes and shapes, we might never wonder why we seem to live our lives governed by those dunes and shapes, instead of knowing that we control what makes them the dunes and shapes they really are, or at least seem to be.